Howdy folks, welcome back to Boondockery. Today, I'm going to be making ghillie blankets. Now that I have my cash boxes packed and ready to place in my cash locations at the secret fun spot, I haven't really quite decided exactly how I'm going to do that once I get there. I'll go prepared to be able to bury them, partially bury them, or to be able to find a decent place to actually hide them. But the one thing I am pretty certain I'm going to need to do is to add a little bit of camouflage to these cash boxes no matter where I place them. And the best way I felt to do that is to make a couple ghillie blankets. These are the items I've assembled to make my ghillie blanket. First of all, I'm going to need to have my cash box so I know what size to make my ghillie blanket. This is a simple little decorative net, fish net, I picked up at the craft um, store. And this is going to be the basis for my ghillie blanket. In order to make the ghillie blanket, ghillie-like, I have a collection of different sizes and shapes and colors of burlap. I also have green and natural jute cordage. And I'm going to be using all of these in a different varieties of uh, consistencies, patterns, and treatments in order to make these look like natural camouflage. Also, I'm going to be using a pair of scissors. Other than that, that's all I'm going to use. The fish net I purchased had no dimensions whatsoever on the packaging. When I opened it up, I was a little disappointed. It's a long, narrow strip of fish netting. This will not deter me, however, because I can fold it in half, find that center, and I will cut this in half and tie it together to double the width. But before I do that, I need to check to make certain that this is going to be adequate coverage for the cash box. This would be halfway. That side's definitely covered. Once I get the burlap on this, it's definitely going to pull the um, fibers apart or the uh, the mesh. It's going to expand the mesh a good bit. As of right now, it's not going to be able to completely cover it. However, if I were to place it diagonally, that will definitely cover the box. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this net in half, tie it back together, and check and see if it's going to be adequate coverage. I've tied the two pieces together, and I believe that is an adequate size. Now I have plenty of coverage on all four sides with a little excess to spread across the forest floor. This is going to be the perfect size to work with. I'm going to go ahead and do the same to the other one and there's a possibility I might be able to get both under this but if not or I wind up hiding uh, both of them in different locations I'll have one for each. Before I get into actually starting to really flesh out the ghillie blanket I want to talk about basic reasons why I'm doing this. I want to camouflage my cash box. And in order to do that, I want to talk a little bit about basic camouflage theory, the principles of camouflage. This box has very distinctive angles, has a very distinctive appearance. If I were to set this in the forest, uh, even beside you know, a bush or in a bush, it's going to be recognizable because of its unnatural angles, shapes, shadows that are created by these uh, slots that are cut in here. 
So there's a lot of things about the shape of this that we don't find in nature. We're going to be hiding it in nature, so we want it to have a much more natural appearance. One of the things that we can do uh, to break up this very obvious appearance is I, I could camouflage paint it. And I've done that to another container. This is a 20 millimeter ammo can. And I did my, my pseudo version of a multicam-ish type of pattern. And this would definitely help conceal it to some degree in the forest. However, you still have all of the hard angles and corners that can be easily distinguished if light's coming through and hitting it. It creates facets. If you had a light source coming from one angle, you're going to have highlights on the hard edges and up to three different variations of shading on <laughs> these flat sides. And it's very easily distinguished as rectangles that don't appear naturally. Even with the uh, small net that I've, I've tied together to create my ghillie blanket, even with this draped over it, that's going to help break up the physical shape of this. If I drape this out, I can get it some sticks or whatever and stick it in there so it's pulling this out it's going to help break that up even just the net alone what i want to do is i want to further increase that ability to break up the image with natural shapes so what i'm going to start doing now is i'm going to start adding strips of burlap and strings of uh, jute in a sort of random sort of pattern to where it's not actually a pattern a random way and varying the colors and where i place them and as i continue to do that sort of in layers i'll do here there here there here there and i'll take a look at it and then if it looks like okay i need to add some more here i need to add some more there i will do that and before you know it this isn't going to be completely, um, you know, filled in. There's going to be gaps of this, this netting that in itself is going to work as, as decent camouflage, even though you don't see little diamond shapes in nature. But because of the amount of burlap and jute that I'm going to add to it, it's going to conceal that a good degree, enough to where it's not going to be readily visible to the naked eye. The first thing I'm going to start doing to start fleshing out the ghillie blanket is I'm going to cut strips of burlap. I have uh, rolled green and brown burlap and I'm going to try to cut all of this to about 18 inches. What's going to happen is I, this will actually be doubled and laced through the mesh in a way to where it's basically going to be twofold and I'm going to do some treatment to the edging to sort of break up this rectangular sort of appearance but before I start doing any of that I want to have a decent stockpile of all of these strips so I'm going to cut initially I'm going to go ahead and cut about 25 strips of the green the brown and even the wider burlap like this, I'm going to cut a bunch of those up as well, and I'm also going to cut up a whole bunch of jute. Again, all about 18 inches long, so when I'm finished with the treatment of this, it's going to be large, but not so large. It's going to look out of place with the flora and the fauna around uh, where it's going to be placed. It's going to, um, by the time it gets through there, really you're only going to be noticing about that much. It's going to be layered over, it's going to be crumpled, it's going to be folded, and it's not going to lay in a flat way as this is 
and it's going to look much more natural at a distance than if I were to just leave it like this. When you're cutting strips of this thin stuff, it's very straightforward. You measure it out and you cut it off. However, when you're working with this thickness, this is completely impractical on its own for what I'm doing. However, it's very easy to make this work when <laughs> you, you know a couple little tricks. Let me show you one of the things I do to be able to make this usable for making a ghillie anything, a ghillie suit, anything like that. I have um, a wide uh, section of the brown already cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball it. It's not going to be <laughs> mathematical by any measure. I mean, you, you can make it mathematical if you want. But I'm going to pull one of the strings that goes lengthwise through here. And I'm going to just go ahead and grab one of those, pull it out, and I'm going to just pull that all the way through. Now, the nice thing about it, you get this nice little string that you can actually use as part of your ghillie, whatever it's going to be. And we'll get another one here. And pull that out. Just real quickly. And you can see how easy that is to isolate. And you simply hold on to that and pull the rest of it away. And you have the string. Now what you also have, let's use my hand, you have two very easily identifiable rows that are going down there that you can see and you're going to be able to cut right along that same area the string you just removed occupied. And again, these don't have to be mathematically correct as far as the width goes. And when you're finished, add it to the pile. Now, I, I don't really like the dark, the really dark brown all that much. So I'm not going to use that much of it. But whether I'm using the really light stuff I just showed you, or I'm using this dark stuff that's wider this is just one trick that you can use to be able to cut it into usable strips for your ghillie whatever and there we go this is going to be a good start I have uh, green jute natural jute natural burlap uh, dark brown burlap green burlap and medium brown burlap. This right here, like I said, it's a start. We'll see how it goes. If we need to uh, cut more, then that's what we'll do. Next, I'm gonna start flushing out the ghillie blanket. What I decided to do was to place my netting on a dowel rod. And I'm gonna hang this, and it's just gonna make it easier for me to work on this as I'm going along and um, I can also step back away from it a little bit further to see where I need to add something or maybe even take something away. You can very easily do this with it just laying loose but it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. This particular bit I know that the camera is probably going to be freaking out on because it won't know what to focus on the net or the wall behind it or things like that. I just took one strip of the burlap that I cut just to do a demonstration on how I'm going to attach the burlap to the net. I'm going to fold it in half, roughly, and I'm going to ball it up to where it's fairly narrow. I'm going to feed it through the net and back through the same side as my hand is on. Just far enough to be able to open up a loop right there. And then I'm going to feed the two loose ends up through 
that loop and then when I get all the way through I'm going to pull it tight and the pseudo knot is literally only affecting one section of the net which is about one inch and it's going to hang loose. I'm going to get and put two or three more on here and then show you how I'm going to go about doing a little bit of a treatment to make this look a little less uh, rectangular. I have three colors on here now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull some of these strings off to the side. Just pinch them and pull them off to the side. And we'll even pull a few off of the bottom. And what that's going to do is it's going to rough up that shape, look at, make it look a little more natural. And let's see, I don't want to do too crazy with it or a whole thing will fall apart. So as you can see, there's a big difference between the rectangular and the one that I just sort of roughed up a little bit. Let's see, we'll get a couple more out of there. And rectangular. And hopefully a little more natural. Just softens the edges a little bit. And uh, if by any chance, like on the, um, the, the three inch wide or four inch wide that I was using, I may be maybe six inches wide, I forget which. Um, if there's a finished end, that means that it has been sewn in place. Just go ahead and snip it off. Just cut right up along the edge. And um, that should be all that you would need to do to be able to get it to where you can soften it up again. And just pull a few out of there on the bottom. And then we'll do the same thing with these as well. And yeah, here's an example of that finished edge. I'm just going to get and pull this up and through. And that should loosen it up enough to where I can get that softer edge. Yeah, there we go. That's like completely broken up now. Yeah. And one last little thing here with the green. And the green looks pretty loose as it is. And that's one nice thing too is it can actually allow um, some color to pass through it and help with that camouflage effect. Okay, and a little back one right there. When I get a large area of this done, it will look dramatically um, more different than it did when I first did that first three where they look like they were six little rectangles. And I'm um, also when I incorporate the jute, all I have to do is put the jute. Let's see what the camera can see. Uh, this looks good. Just pull it right up through one of the openings and the net. Make a loop. Pull it through on the loop. You know, go uh, counter roll just a few times to soften up that end, and it's going to pretty much unravel itself and fuzz itself up pretty well uh, on its own. So you don't have to do too much with that. And I'm going to put a natural jute one right here on the side, right beside it, and do the same thing. Just go counter twist of what's already existing there, fuzz it up just a little bit, and you don't have to do much with it because being out in the environment and the elements will definitely help keep it going there from there. 
Now I'm just going to do patchwork here, there, everywhere. And it's probably going to take me, I would say, a couple hours to get this, you know, completely done to the point to where I feel that it would work well as a ghillie blanket. Well, folks, I uh, finished it up. And I think it looks pretty good. Took a good little bit of time to rough up the edges of those rectangular pieces of burlap. I'll get step aside and let you check it out. Here are the cash boxes with no camouflage. There are the boxes with camouflage. Folks, this ghillie blanket is not meant to make something invisible. It's basically a blank canvas for you to be able to add other items from the surroundings to it in order to make it blend in much better. It definitely breaks up the silhouette, it breaks up the, sit the shape, it breaks up those facets, you don't see that, and with a little bit of weathering adding a little bit of um, uh, foliage that are around it, lace it up through here. If I'm in an area to where there's any type of vines, uh, green briar, uh, you have, you name it, you can weave it in with this stuff and it will become part of this whole camouflage scheme. I'll be perfectly honest with you, it's incredibly messy. So if you have no place to do this type of stuff, inside especially carpeted floor you definitely don't want to do it with carpeted floor but if you have some place if you don't have any place you work on it indoors definitely work on it outdoors because it is very messy it's probably going to take me close to an hour to clean this place up once i'm finished folks if you like today's video i'd appreciate a thumbs up if you watch the video you haven't yet subscribed you like the content please consider doing so. And if you're subscribing, it's just silly for you not to hit the notifications bell to keep up to date on all my current content. Also, if you have friends that might like what I'm doing here on the channel, share it to them. Share it on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Doesn't matter where, just share it. And also, if you're getting in to the content of this channel, you have something to contribute please do so. One of my favorite parts of YouTubing are the comments. I get phenomenal comments from very knowledgeable, very experienced individuals that really add to my bushcraft bag of tricks. And it definitely has to do the same thing for other people that are reading them. It's just a tremendous asset and I'm so very grateful for it. Speaking of gratitude, Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.